The main specific problem regarding the formation of customary IHL is the difficulty of finding relevant state practice. Indeed, IHL is mainly made of prohibitions, that is, obligations not to do something. When a state abstains from doing something, it is difficult to establish whether such abstention may be counted as relevant practice for the formation of customary law. For example, there are many reasons why a state may choose not to attack a hospital and it is possible that the question of legality does not even enter into consideration. That's why certain specific approaches to the formation of customary IHL have been asserted, especially given the strong determination not only from scholars, but also from international criminal jurisdictions and through bodies such as the RCRC to progressively expand the scope of IHL. We'll briefly examine two expansive approaches to the identification of customary rules of IHL. One controversial approach may be termed a sliding scale approach to custom. According to proponents of this view, the more fundamental a rule of law is, the less evidence you must find to support it. In the Kupreskic case, for example, the ICTY asserted that, and I quote it, principles of international humanitarian law may emerge through a customary process under the pressure of the demands of humanity or the dictates of public conscience, even where state practice is scant or inconsistent. This approach is very questionable as it is based on very subjective considerations and does not provide any further guidelines on the specific way in which customary law may emerge. The difficulty of finding state practice has also led scholars arguing for broader conception of what constitutes practice. Traditionally, practice was viewed as action, what states actually did rather than what they said. Advocates who argue for a broader conception of practice argue that state declarations, including nas national legislation and case law, codes of conduct, military manuals, and the debates and resolutions of international organizations should all be considered state practice. This approach is widespread amongst academics and adopted by both the ICTY throughout its case law, but also by the ICRC in its study on customary IHL. The issue of whether this approach may be reconciled with the fundamentals of the form formation process of customary law is debated. Some consider that state declarations are part of the opinio juris element and cannot alone be counted as relevant state practice for the formation of customary law, while others accept it. One solution may be to argue that such approach does not distort or derogate to the formation process of customary law, which remains based on the two traditional elements, practice and opinio juris. But it involves a specific application of these two elements, which is different from other fields of international law. In particular, given the specificity of IHL, the most relevant state practice to which a major role must be given for the formation of customary IHL should be found in a specific form of practice, in particular verbal acts of states, rather than their material conducts. As we'll see, this reconciliatory position is in line with the current work of the International Commission on the Identification of Customary International Law.